Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. I kind of wanted to sit down and have somewhat of a cat chat with you guys. I haven't done this in so long and I would totally be doing it on my cat chats couch in my little corner, but Celine has destroyed that couch. I have to wash my pillows, my throw, the actual couch, it's, it's a lot. So I didn't want to scare you guys because I'm doing that this weekend and <laughs> I really just wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about this because this has been on my mind for a few days and I don't even know what I'm titling this video. I don't, I don't even know how to go about this video, where to start, how to end it, what the point is. <laughs> I don't really know. All I know is that I really wanted to make this video and it's something I really wanted to talk about even though I never really pictured myself making this kind of video but the other day on my Instagram stories I posted this right here and I briefly spoke about how I haven't changed my phone case in a really long time because somehow in my mind Honestly, I can't even explain why, but I've never been able to change my phone case unless my phone case breaks or I change my phone, so I have to get a new phone case. Those are the only times it's been acceptable for me. And I wrote like F-U-O-C-D, um, but I was changing my phone case anyway. And whatever, I had posted that on Instagram and I got an overwhelming amount of DMs. Really supportive, amazing, sweet DMs from so many of you guys who actually feel the same way, who deal with this, with that same thing. And a lot of you guys really wanted me to do a video on this. Just to kind of talk about my experience with OCD, I do this because I don't, I've never, I've never been diagnosed with OCD. I've never gone to a doctor about this. I used to go to a psychiatrist regularly and a psychologist regularly after like my parents' divorce. But my therapy was like mainly focused on like depression and dealing with my anxiety. I didn't really talk about this kind of thing with my therapist ever. It was always just mainly focused on my family and how to cope with things. So it's not something I've ever been diagnosed, but when I research OCD and I and I learn about it, I definitely feel like I have it, I'm not sure. But like I said, I got an overwhelming amount of DMs just asking me to talk about it, talk about the things that I experienced, like how, how I try to cope with it. And I thought, you know what, I'm definitely gonna do that. I don't really talk about this um, because if I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I have so much anxiety right now, like even thinking about talking about Things like this because I'm a big believer in like the things you say, the things you put out into the universe, they have a lot of power and the universe is listening to us and I really believe that you know, the things you say matter. And yes, actions speak louder than words, but let me tell you, words speak very loudly. It's something I've really, really learned through the years and I feel like in the past few years, I have focused on trying to put out good and say good things and try not to be so negative and say like, you know, so, you know, you get me? I think words are powerful and I guess I've always been really scared about like admitting certain things out loud or saying things. But if there's something I've realized is that sometimes it's nice to know that you're not alone in something. Sometimes it's comforting knowing somebody else is dealing with the exact same things because it makes you feel a little less I don't know what word to use it makes you feel a little less different and I know there are so many people out there that have those exact same thoughts and if just telling my story sharing my story helps you feel good or feel better in some way then I definitely feel complete I feel like you know, I, I, I did what I should have. And I really want to talk about the phone case thing because I actually got so many questions. Like a lot of you guys were confused, like, what do you mean you can't change your phone case? And honestly, I don't know how to explain this. I guess that's part of OCD, um, perhaps, but I really can't explain what it is that I feel when I have these feelings. Honestly, it's extremely hard to explain. I don't know what it is, but I feel like something bad is gonna happen if I change my phone case, and I can't even tell you why it's my phone case specifically. It's actually also my wallpaper, but I've had this exact same wallpaper on my phone since like uh, 2011, I believe. Like, I'm not even kidding. Since like 2011, I haven't changed my wallpaper, or my lock screen. I mean, the proof is in the size of the photo. Like, it's not even the entire screen because it's just been the same from all of my old phones. I haven't changed it at all. And the phone screen has gotten bigger, so it has these black lines on top and on the bottom, but it's gonna stay like that. And honestly, I don't know why, but I feel like if I change my wallpaper, and, I, and I'm smiling while I'm saying these things because I realize how ridiculous that can sound to a lot of you. I wish it wasn't the case. I wish I didn't have these feelings or these thoughts, but it is. We actually make really beautiful wallpapers over at Lights Lacquer. Natalia spends a lot of time on them and they always come out so cute and I always want to save it on my phone, but I can never bring myself to actually 
save it on my phone and I've always been that way with my phone case as well and it's crazy looking at the viewfinder right now with like a different phone case for absolutely no reason but just to give you a, an idea of the severity of the situation one time a few years ago I was at a ColourPop photo shoot which means I was in California which I'm already an anxiety filled mess when I'm not home, especially when I'm not in the same state, especially when I have traveled on an airplane. Like it's, when I'm in California, I'm not okay. Like I go for work and it's really fun. I love it. I love the energy in California and it's great, but I'm, I'm a mess. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm really stressed out or I have a lot of anxiety, I have a lot going on, my OCD is like way worse. I find myself doing things more than I would when I'm home. I'm a little bit more relaxed there. And so I was already on edge at this ColourPop photo shoot and Jordan, which I, I know a lot of you guys know Jordan, she used to work at ColourPop. She's my my angel, my everything. I love her like more than anything. She's amazing. And she walked up to me and she had a, a phone case. ColourPop was like selling phone cases at the time and they were adorable phone cases. They were so cute. They had like, you went like this and it was like liquidy and the things would slide and it was really adorable. And at the time, Jordan didn't know about my my phone case thing and she hands one to me she's like here take it take it home you can keep it and I was like oh my gosh thank you so much I love it I'm gonna use it it's gonna be great knowing in my head like yeah it's probably not gonna happen but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deny the phone case that's a little weird so I was like yes it's amazing thank you so much I love it and she was like oh try it on your phone and so I did I tried it on I took off my phone case with every intention of obviously putting my other phone case back on but in that moment I went off to like finish taking the photos and honestly it completely slipped my mind I got into like photo mode I was taking a bunch of pictures and then Couple hours later, I walk up to my bag and I'm looking around for my phone case so that I can switch it out and my phone case is nowhere to be found. Like we could not find it anywhere. It wasn't in my bag, it wasn't on the floor, it wasn't on the table, it was nowhere. And then the people that were there were like, oh, maybe it was accidentally thrown away, but they had just taken out all the garbage. It was like the end of the photo shoot. And so I couldn't look through the garbage because you bet your ass I would've. And honestly, I really tried to compose myself as much as I could in front of this brand and my friends. And I was like, oh, it's fine, it's okay. At least I have this phone case, it's all good. You know, it's not a big deal. I'm going home with a phone case, you know, it's, it's fine. And then I quickly slipped away into the bathroom and I shit you not, I had a mental freaking breakdown, guys. I had a full on panic attack in that bathroom. I was convinced my plane was going down. I was convinced I got that I was gonna get back on that airplane. It was gonna crash to the ground and I wasn't gonna make it back to Miami. I don't know, I had convinced myself that because I threw away my phone case, I was going to die in an airplane. And I know how not okay that sounds, but I can't explain it. It's just how I felt and you know, Took me about 10 minutes in the bathroom. I tried to compose myself. Thank God it was the end of the photo shoot because I would have not been able to continue. And then when I got back to my hotel room, I was just like pacing around the entire room. It was, it was a lot, but I honestly believe it's kind of the reason I was able to change my phone case recently because after that trip, after that whole panic attack, I got on the plane, my plane landed safely. I was fine. After that, I kind of had like this overwhelming like, Okay, maybe things aren't as intense as they are in my mind, you know? Mind you, the entire five hours of that airplane ride were absolute hell. You can just imagine. I'm already a ball of nerves on the airplane. That what, worst plane ride I've ever had. I mean, it was a super smooth ride, it was great. But mentally, it was really exhausting, it was awful. And you know, sometimes I'll have those little moments of victories, those little wins, but they usually come right after, like, the storm. It's the calm after the storm. But sometimes you have to like forcefully put yourself through the storm in order to get to the calm, <laughs> believe it or not. Actually, I actually have another story about that where I had a very similar situation. I'll tell you about that in a second, but I just wanted to tell you about the phone case thing because I got a lot of questions about it. And honestly, I don't know where that came from, but we recently started selling phone cases on lightslabel.com. We used to have a different manufacturer like when the Bodeguita one dropped or the Libre phone cases dropped, but we changed our manufacturer for our Basically launch and our Muy Cozy launch, and the phone cases are like really good quality. Like I dropped this crap and it doesn't break. It's like very, very sturdy, really, really amazing. And so I had so much FOMO when the Basically phone cases launched and like all of my friends, my family, they had those new phone cases and I, I wanted that phone case so bad. I wanted to use it so bad. I wanted you guys to see it. I just, I, I wanted to use it. And I went back and forth for days and days and days and I don't know, I can't 
can't explain it, but I woke up one day and I was like, I'm changing my phone case today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my phone case and nothing's gonna happen. Everything is gonna be completely fine. And that's what I did. I changed my phone case that day. I posted that on Instagram and I feel like I can do it now. Uh, we just launched the Mui Cozy case and I didn't even think about it and I, and I changed my case. And that gets me really excited because it makes me feel like I'm getting a little emotional right now, but it makes me feel like I can do that with other things in my life as well, you know? Uh, baby steps, but I'm getting somewhere and that's important, but it took a lot of courage <laughs> um, And a lot of reminding myself that hey if you were fine in California changing your phone case You're gonna be fine here. I know that logic doesn't make sense, but it, it definitely helped me get to where I am. To backtrack a little bit here, I, I just want to say, I want to mention, I've always felt like a really, really anxious kid. When I became an adult, I was like, oh, uh, anxiety. That's what you've had your whole life, got it. I've always dealt with things like this, but my OCD, I feel like it didn't get bad until I started driving, until I became a driver, which driving is one of my biggest fears. Uh, cars scare me like nothing else. Public transportation, if you if you couldn't guess, by the airplane, the car, elevators, buses, subway, oh, you'll never, you'll never see me ride a subway. Public transportation terrifies me like nothing else. And so when I started driving, that's when I really started to notice, like, do I have OCD? Is that, is that what's happening? I had this thing where I had to pray three times when I got into a car, like before I started driving. And I say had because um, I haven't driven in years. That is a whole other thing in my life that I have to figure out and confront um, because I don't wanna depend on other people. And I feel like I really do. Um, and I limit myself a lot. Sorry, I'm getting really emotional, but it's hard as an adult to be so scared to drive. You have to ask other adults around you to like take you places. I don't know, anyway, <clears throat> like I said, whole other thing that I gotta work on. So like what I was saying, <laughs> every time I got into my car to drive, I used to have to pray three times. It couldn't be twice, once, it had to be three times and it had to be the same prayer three times and I'm not like super religious. I have a lot of faith, I believe in God, but I'm not, I don't go to church. I'm more spiritual than I am religious, but I do like to pray. I find that it really helps my anxiety. It's something I enjoy, it helps me feel better. So I, anyway, I'd have to do that three times and I used to drive with a rosary around my mirror and I had to like grab it three times after every single prayer and then after I would grab it, I would have to do the sign of the cross three times after. It was a whole process. Process, but I could not start driving until I did that process and so I never used to like driving with anybody in my car I never used to like to pick anyone up drop them off anywhere whenever I would go anywhere with my friends family I would always ask someone else to drive or let's go in your car because I didn't want anybody to get in my car with me And then see me do that and then think like uh, are you okay? Like so, oh, a third time? Is that what we're doing? I just didn't want the judgments. I didn't want people to think I was this weirdo. And so very rarely did I have passengers in my car. I kind of feel like the whole driving thing kind of sparked a bunch of random little OCD things that I felt like I had to do. If not, I, I thought I would get into an accident. Like, for example, um, this one is a little hard to admit, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this is one's a little strange, but I have to kind of close the door, like right before I'm gonna close it and lock it to leave, I have to like kind of close it a little bit, like where I have this much open, where I can see like this much. I have to close one eye. And by the way, I swear I'm not making this up. I have to close one eye and I have to go like this to Cornelius and then close the door and then I'll be on my merry way. And it can't be Celine and it can't be Porter because this thing that I started doing started when Cornelius was my only dog. Like the last thing I see before I go, it has to be Cornelius, I gotta give him a kiss. If not, I just can't get in the car. And that little thing has remained uh, ever since. And it honestly doesn't matter who's driving, but if I'm leaving my house, I have to do that. And it's actually pretty funny, except it's not funny. But the other day, my mom was here at my house and she was gonna stay here with the dogs and I was leaving to a photo shoot with Danny. And as I'm going to close the door, she's like standing like behind the door. She's gonna close it behind me and then lock it for me. And I close the door like halfway and I see her like in the thing and she's like, okay. Close the door and I'm like, mom, can you, can you move? She's like, okay, like, she's like, why? And I'm like, just, can you just, can you just move for a second? And she's like, I need to see Cornelius. And she's like, okay, and she like, moved. I blew Cornelius a kiss and I, I slammed the door and I just went out running. And my immediate thought was, please don't open the door because then I'm gonna have to go back and do this all over again because I have to close the door and then go. And when I sat in the car, I was like, I wonder what my mom was thinking on the other end of that door, like, what was that about? And it honestly didn't hit me about how strange that was until my mom was there and, and we had that moment. And yeah, 
um, now you know what I have to do every single day when I leave my house. And I'm not gonna lie, sometimes it's a bit of an issue because sometimes Cornelius is off sleeping somewhere and he's not right at the door as I'm leaving and then it becomes a little awkward because I have to call Cornelius over to the door. I have to pretend like I'm gonna tell him something, you know, remove him from his comfort just to be like, okay, and then close the door. And then Cornelius is like, what the hell? Why did you make me get off the couch? For what? It's uncomfortable for both of us. And I know a lot of you guys are watching this like, yes, you can. Just close the door and go. Just, I've tried. But I'll get there. I'll get there. Look, I have a new phone case. Who would have thought, huh? Another thing, um, I'm just, you know what? I'm just gonna tell you everything. I'm just gonna tell, tell you, maybe not everything. I'm just gonna tell you the things that I do on a daily basis that don't make any sense. But, um, you know, if you do the same thing, hey, we're surviving. We're doing this this life thing. Maybe not as good as some other people who don't experience these things, but bro, we're hanging in there and that's that's what matters, okay? But I'm curious to know, do any of you guys when you're listening to music, if you're like jamming on Spotify, I listen to music every single day. It is my personal therapy, but every time I'm going to take off my headphones or I'm done listening to music for the night, the last song I leave it on is very important. Like it can't be a breakup song, it can't be a sad song, it can't be like a traumatic song. It can't be anything that's not amazing, happy, a loving song. A happy song because somehow in my mind I feel like whatever song I leave it on is gonna reflect on my daily life saying this shit out loud I'm not even gonna lie what is this I don't try for this to happen I don't come up with these random thoughts they they're literally to just live there but I've been that way since my very first iPod like my little freaking iPod shuffle like I would play the song and it had to be a good song or if not I couldn't take my headphones out and yeah it's frustrating it makes you feel Weird. It makes you feel like, why is my brain this way? The fact that none of my skincare and shampoo bottles can touch underneath my sink. I don't know what that's about. I don't know. But every time I go to place a bottle under my sink, if they're touching and I close the door and I walk away, I am thinking about them touching the entire time I close the door, the entire time I walked away. And I end up turning back around, going back under my sink and separating them and making sure that none of them are touching. Why? I don't know. I'm that way with my mug cabinet too, where I keep all my mugs in my kitchen the mugs can't be touching and I, I swear I've tried so hard to like purposely put it like next to the other one where they're touching and I'll close the door and I'll leave but it honestly won't leave my mind like I, I won't stop thinking about it until I turn around and separate my mugs I try so hard every single day to get better and to work on my mental health and I've told you guys this in the past like I read like a lot of self-help books um, I listen to like very positive podcasts in between all my murdery shit. That doesn't help by the way, um, because I'm my own worst enemy. Um, but I try, I try, I really do. And some days I'm good, some days I'm really great and I'm feeling amazing and then other days I feel like the world is gonna collapse if I do anything a certain way. And I'm like that with so many things. Like even just talking to my friends, a normal conversation. Like let's say one of them jokingly, this is super random and it makes no sense, but let's just say one of my friends was like, haha, wouldn't it be funny if you like uh, fell and like broke your knee? None of my friends would ever say that to me, but I'm just giving you an example. And then it's like, haha, yeah, that's so funny. That would be, be so funny if that happened. And then everybody laughs. I literally will not stop thinking about what you just said unless you confirm that it's not gonna happen. Like I'd be like, ha, that's funny, but say out loud, please, that I'm not gonna fall and, and hurt my knee. And my friend would be like, oh, obviously, like obviously, like that's not funny. It was a joke. And I'm like, no, okay, but say it. Say it. you're not gonna fall and break your knee. And again, that was just an example, a really bad one, but I'm like that with so many things and sometimes I think like, do my family and friends think that I'm not okay? And you know, it's been kind of hard for me because growing up um, and still to this day, I've always felt like, and I'm, I swear I'm not saying this to sound like, okay, like, but I've always felt like the weakest link. Like out of all my friends, I'm definitely the biggest scaredy cat, the biggest wussy of life. I, every single person I know is braver than I am. Every single person, even the children in my life. Mila, oh my God, has way more balls than I do. And it actually wasn't until I started making videos on the internet and I started to open up a little bit more about my anxiety and my fears and my feelings when I realized like, oh my God, I'm not alone in this. You know, the internet is a really dark place. Social media is a really dark, twisted, fucked up place. But it has truly made me feel accepted, normal. So many of you guys throughout the years have told me about your anxiety, the things you've been dealing with, uh, all the stories I've read. It really is incredible how we're not alone. You know, there's there's always someone out there that's gonna understand you. And even though it might feel like nobody around me, like in my personal real life gets me, I find so much comfort in this place where we can 
talk about these things and there's there's such a level of understanding like I'm so grateful that I have this platform and I'm able to express how I feel without the judgment and where other people can leave comments without the judgment where we can all talk and express ourselves and I love that you guys like respond in the comments to to, to each other and basically what I'm trying to say is it's, it really is such a good feeling to know you're not alone I know that sounds messed up because the last thing I would want is other people to feel like I do I don't want anybody to feel those things but there is a level of comfort in knowing that people are going through the same things that you are. I'm so sorry this video is so long already. I have been rambling here for a long time and I feel like there really is no conclusion to this video. There are so many more things that I work on on a daily basis and I know I should. I should. I should definitely go to therapy. I really want to go to therapy. Therapy was so amazing for me. A few years ago, it was it was incredible. And I definitely want to go back. It's just, there's a lot going on in the world. I, I don't want to leave my house. I honestly just leave when I absolutely have to. And don't get me wrong, this is, I feel like this is 100% a necessity. And I can do virtual therapy. I hear that that's really helpful too, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, before I go, I want to leave you with another story that helped me break one of my curses. And I don't know, maybe it helps you get the courage to try to break one of yours as well. I don't know about you, but I feel like I make the most progress when I'm forced into things, you know? Like they say if you're afraid of flying, like travel a lot, get on a lot of airplanes because the less you get on an airplane, the more scared you are to get on one. And let me tell you, that's extremely true. I haven't gotten on an airplane at all in 2020, I don't think. Oh yeah, no, I'm lying. I went on an airplane in February, like right before everything went, or, like right before this whole shit went down. And like the thought of me getting on one is scary. Like I might never get on one again. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, I am gonna get on one. I am gonna get on one. But they say the best way to conquer your fears is to face them head on, which is the scariest thing in the world. But here's another story where I had to break through for forcefully and again it's tied to driving <laughs> so i used to have this little white nissan sentra it was my first car i loved it so much and i don't know how but somehow i accumulated three bobby pins on my passenger side i don't know if it was like from taking my bobby pins out from like a scrunchie i don't know if they were all taken out at once if i had three in my hair or if they were accumulated over time i don't know but somehow three bobby pins ended up in my passenger seat of my nissan sentra like three little brown bobby pins and they stayed there for eternity they stayed there forever. I couldn't go anywhere without checking. That was another thing, by the way. I had to do my three little prayers, whatever, and then I had to make sure, look over and check that my bobby pins were intact and, and in the right place. But it was never a problem because, I, like I said, I never really drove with anybody. If I did, I was the one being driven. But one time I had to drive Danny to work because his car was like getting serviced or something. And he went downstairs and he went to go sit into the car before me. I was like still up in the apartment. And when I go to sit down and I sit in my car and like I go to do my, my three prayers because I mean, Danny knows about the things that I do. And even though he doesn't understand, cause he doesn't, he doesn't experience that, he gets me, he, he knows. But of course, you know, there are some things that we keep to ourselves, uh, things that may sound a little more irrational than other things, like keeping three bobby pins intact on your passenger car seat is a little harder to understand and accept than, hey, I have to pray three times before we go. That's like, okay, I got it. And so when I sat down and after I finished praying, I looked over and I realized like, oh, he's sitting on my bobby pins, which I mean, it's fine because they're there. They're just under him, but it's fine. They're there. <laughs> it sounds, this sounds so dumb. But I looked at him and I was like, hey, can you lift your butt? Wait, can you go like this? And he went like this and I was like, I had bobby pins there. Like what happened to my bobby pins? He's like, oh, I threw them out. I was like, huh? What do you mean? He's like, yeah, I was picking up garbage from your car. The McDonald's cup, the napkins on the floor. He's like, so I just grabbed it, picked it all up and threw it in the garbage. And honestly, it took everything inside of me to not freak out because I realize how that sounds. I realize that that doesn't make any sense, but I got so not angry. I got like, I, I got really freaked out. And he was like, what's wrong? And I was like, I just, I just I needed those bobby pins there. I just needed them there. And honestly, I handled it pretty well because I didn't want to scare Danny. But in my mind, I was not going to make it on my way to drop him off at work. Like in my mind, I was like, oh God, these bobby pins are gone. It's over for us. But I made it. I dropped him off at work and I made it all the way back home by myself. And I pretty much kissed the ground when I got out of the car, but I did it. Like I made it and I was okay. I was fine. The bobby pins were somewhere in the garbage and I still made it back home. I don't know if you guys have ever had that feeling, but it's just like a rush of relief. And it kind of makes you feel like, oh my gosh, if I can do this, I can do anything. I can fight against all of these things that I do. Those little victories that come after the chaos make me realize like, 
wow, I really do need to face these things head on. I really do need the chaos in order to get to those wins. You know, and it seems so cliche and it seems so freaking obvious, but you really do need to pass the rain to get to the rainbow. Like that's, that's, that's how it works. And you know, some people are lucky where they wake up and there are rainbows everywhere already. You know, some people don't have to go through the rain to get to the rainbow and that's great and I love that. I, I love that for them, I really do. <laughs> but some of us are not built like that, you know? And it's okay. And like I've said before in a hundred other videos, I think what matters is that we are trying and that we're doing our best to be the best versions of ourselves. And I know it's hard, trust me, I know it's really, really hard because the mind is a very tricky thing and sometimes it feels way more powerful than us, but we are stronger. Our will, our soul, who we are inside, it is stronger than the anxieties, the fears, the OCD, the things that we deal with in here. We're stronger in here. And sometimes it takes a lifetime. Sometimes we're on this journey forever. I wake up certain days and I feel on top of the world. And other days I feel like absolute dog shit. And I just gotta take it day by day. We are most important. Who we are to ourselves. We have to be our number one fans. We have to be our number one supporters. And we have to try to do our best. We owe it to ourselves. We only have ourselves. Self love is the most important love. And I think it's super important important to know and to tell ourselves every day that just because we have these things that that we can't explain or control in our mind, it doesn't make us less than anyone else. It doesn't make us crazy. It doesn't make us weird. It makes us freaking human. Like, yeah, welcome to the real world. No one's okay. But anyway, guys, I think I have to wrap this video up at this point, right? Because like, what am I even talking about anymore? But I just wanted to film this video because like I said, I got so many DMs about my phone case and like what the hell I was even talking about. And I kind of wanted to give you that little story while telling you about all the other things that I deal with. A fraction, a fraction of the things that go on in my mind, like truly a fraction. And I just wanted to tell you that we're all okay and it's gonna be okay. So yeah, yep. And that completes this video. That's my cat chats. This is my story time for today. Not much of a story time or a cat chats, but you know, at least maybe I kept you company while you're eating dinner or something. And maybe there's a chance that at least one of you guys found comfort in this video. Maybe you have to leave your door slightly open on the way out and then close one eye and blow a kiss to your oldest dog. I kind of want to give you guys my New Year's resolution because I... Actually, I don't want you to hold me to it <laughs> because it's just gonna give me more anxiety. I'm not even gonna lie. It's gonna make things worse. Don't hold me to it, but I want you guys to know that my New Year's resolution is to drive. Fun fact, it was my 2020 New Year's resolution. I was like, I'm gonna drive in 2020. But to be fair, I, uh, 2020 went to shit and so I don't think, I don't think driving this year is a good idea anyway. But that's my resolution. Um, even if it's around the block, baby, I haven't put my foot to a gas pedal in years. But anyway guys, that completes this video. Danny just got home. My dogs are about to freaking go nuts. So I need to wrap this up, but I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Whatever this video was, I hope you liked it. And yeah, I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye.